Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. This is part of a series of webinars that we've been holding on a monthly basis. So if you haven't seen our previous ones, take a look on our website, a recording of those is up on there uh, and this one will go up on there as well. Uh, so as I said, this is today's webinar and I'm your host Lauren Sidhu and I'm a business development representative here at Enable. So I'm involved in talking to prospects and understanding their initial challenges. And I'm live in the Enable studio today with Andy James. So Andy, what do you think to the studio? Oh, it's great. It's very impressive. <laughs> a nice change from your usual surroundings, I can imagine. <laughs> yes. Great. So Andy, if you could just introduce a bit about yourself uh, and what you do here at Enable. Sure. Yeah. My name's uh, Andy James. I'm Enable's Chief Product Officer. Um, I've been with Enable for 12 years now. Um, but really for 25 years, I've been fascinated by um, the power of software and the internet to uh, power B2B uh, trading relationships. Great, thank you Andy. So today we're going to be discussing how the building materials industry could drive growth and profitability through complex business business deals. Uh, so the agenda for today is really looking at complex deals, uh, for example rebates and what we mean by those, how they impact upon profit uh, and how why they're prevalent in the building materials industry and strategies then for driving growth and profitability. So if you do have any questions throughout, please drop them into our Q&A. We're hopefully going to be answering as many of those as possible um, and get involved. So let's get started. So first of all, Andy, an example of a complex business business deal is a rebate. But I know from talking to prospects myself that some people uh, use a different term for it or they're not quite sure what we mean by rebate. Uh, so what is a rebate, first of all? Sure. Um, so in this broadest sense, um, a rebate is um, some money paid back to a customer after they've purchased something. Um, and very often even after they've paid for that thing that they've purchased. Um, and we might say that a rebate is a retrospectively applied discount, um, but even that is narrowing the, the term a little. Um, but the critical thing is that rebates are paid retrospectively. And it's this retrospective nature that makes them so difficult to handle. Yeah. Uh, and what are the different rebate terms? Can you give us some examples of, of what prospects or clients have used? Yeah, it's, it's amazing that um, after so many years, we still discover new terms for rebates all of the time. Um, and uh, some examples. So first of all, we might think of supplier rebates. Um, these are rebates receivable from the point of view of a customer receiving those rebates. You might think of customer rebates. So these are rebates payable from the point of view of the supplier. But we might have other generic terms. So we might have terms like commercial income. A distributor maybe is managing their commercial income. Maybe a distributor is managing their vendor funds as a broad category. Or we might have some more specific Terms. So, for example, we might have market development funds, MDFs, um, we might have co-op funds um, and other marketing incentive funds. Um, and furthermore, we might then have some pricing related, quite specific ones. So, um, special pricing agreements is often the generic term. Um, and there's various flavours of those, claim backs, retros, SPAs, contract support is widely recognised in the UK building materials industry. So. Loads of different terms, new ones every day, but this, the, the, the terminology challenge is often um, something that really does um, make investigating um, rebates um, very difficult for companies. Yeah, I know from talking to prospects, some people assume that they don't have a rebate, and, and then when we actually get into discussions, it, it's quite, quite clear that they do, but they just call it something else. So, so it seems like rebates should have their own dictionary then maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why are rebates important? Well, for many reasons, um, and because they have many purposes really. Um, so a rebate might be really important to a distributor because it accounts for the vast majority, if not all of their gross profit. And really many distributors and possibly many retailers as well um, are operating at zero margin or even a loss until they've received their rebates receivable. So that makes them of vital importance. For a manufacturer, it's the vehicle by which they can invest in taking their product to, to market through their distribution um, channels. So it gives them the opportunity to um, offer discounts that are proportional to customer performance. Um, it allows them to um, invest in some marketing activities with their distribution partners um, and it allows them to offer a sort of um, financial and commercial um, service to their customers where they can help their customers achieve the right balance between um, pricing and cash flow. 
So like many industries, then why are complex rebates prevalent, for example, in the building materials industry? Well, complex is a key, key word in all that, I think. Um, if we think of an individual rebate element, it's probably quite simple and it can be accommodated quite easily. But it's really the scale that starts to become uh, challenging. So, for example, as a distribute, we might have several hundred um, vendor partners. And we might have fairly bespoke commercial terms with each of those. So, so there, there, there's a volume challenge um, at play. Um, but to the question, why, why, why are they prevalent? They're prevalent because um, they are very purposeful, but there are a lot of different purposes that they can be, they can be put to. They can be um, a vehicle for um, financing marketing activities. Um, they can be a vehicle for adjusting pricing based on performance. Um, they could be a vehicle maybe for, um, for, for guaranteeing or, or securing margin at the center um, by disguising a certain amount of pricing from um, branch, you know, the pricing into branches. Also growth, um, growth at the product level can be, can be um, driven through, through highly focused incentive rebates. Um, and finally, they may, maybe they're a vehicle where uh, manufacturers and distributors can collaborate to win the business of certain contractors or certain projects through special pricing arrangements. Okay, so what risks do these complex deals carry with them? Mm. Well, clearly for the distributor, the, the risk is enormous. They've got their entire profit tied up into these rebate programs. But really the whole B2B um, relationship is under, under, under pressure. Um, and it's under pressure due to the complexity involved and due to the risks that can creep in because of that, that complexity. Um, so um, the, 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 all of that serves to, to really create a fog um, through which the actual original purpose of the B2B um, trade agreements is, is lost um, and cash flow suffers, um, margin suffers, um, the desired plan to grow sales um, isn't, isn't, isn't executed well. But we know here, Andy, that there is an opportunity with these complex deals to use them as part of a, a strategy for growth and profitability. So in looking at that strategy, what would the first step be? Well, the first step is probably to um, improve the way these deals are managed and calculated. Um, uh, investing time and energy in refining and improving the uh, kind of operational aspects of these deals um, really is, is, is the foundation and the first step. Okay, and, and we touched on the benefits of complex deals previously anyway. So we know that the problem really is with managing and calculating those. So what are the kind of problems that arise? Yeah, so um, the, 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 there is some, uh, many really. Um, so the first is um, really the, the uh, risk to cash flow and the risk to profitability through um, not um, executing the deals well enough. Um, but the other risk is, is, is down to this trading relationship again. Um, so when we have disputes creeping in, when we have discrepancies creeping in, and when we have trust ero eroding, um, then really um, team members on either side of the relationship um, will be um, frustrated, um, operational efficiency will de decline, um, and the purpose really of the, of the deals will be sort of lost in, lost in the fog of all the noise created through the, the um, inefficiency. And again, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that it does introduce financial reporting risk. I wonder how many FDs out there um, keep their fingers crossed, um, hoping that the rebate accruals get proved right at the end of the year. We could ask them. <laughs> <laughs> but the good news is that there is a new category of software available now called a rebate management system. But I know from talking to prospects as well that not everyone knows what this means. So Andy, what do we mean by a rebate management system? Sure, yeah. Rebate management software is software that is, I guess, fundamentally deal-centric, you know, software that is all, all about the deal. Um, and rebate management software can have a number of um, components to it. Um, the first is really it needs to be a total solution for all, all rebates in the business. We might have customer rebates, we might have supplier rebates, um, we might have um, special pricing retro type arrangements at play. So we've got this sort of idea of a comprehensive deals library. The second is having automation of the calculations, so the alignment of the transactional data to the 
to the rebate deals. So they're always looking at up-to-date information, as up-to-date as it can be based on the transactions that have uh, been going, going on against those deals. Um, then, um, uh, really, we want the software to, to give us easy clarity as to um, um, incentive targets and how we're performing against those incentive targets, because those are, of course, put in place to drive, drive behavior, drive growth. So being able to see them is, is key. And then the final bit, of course, is that we need to have some workflows. So we might have workflows for setting up the deals. We might have workflows for um, settling or receiving monies against the deals. Um, but also we might have um, audit and permission controls to ensure that um, all actions are auditable and tracked. Um, and that when the auditors um, arrive, we've got a, a quality data set to take them through um, that's really been populated by a virus system rather than human, um, human um, activities. Yeah. So to summarise your first point then, the first part of uh, any kind of business strategy for driving growth and profitability would be really managing and executing those deals well. and. and also calculating them accurately because mm. I know from talking to prospects as well you can have a system in place currently but actually the calculation might be uh, not as accurate as it could be and that's where some funds could be missed potentially sure. so really taking control of that okay so what would be the, the next step following on from that to to yeah. again such a strategy well maybe we can think that um, managing the deals better is just the foundation that is an element of um, housekeeping <laughs> getting the house in order <laughs> Um, but maybe the, really the, the purpose of these rebates is that they are business to business arrangements and they're all about um, having a joint business plan with our mm -hmm. trading partners, whether our trading partner is a customer or whether our trading partner is a, is a vendor, supplier. Um, so maybe the next step once we have our house in order is to really start to drive forward the notion of trading partner collaboration and to, um, and to get these deals back to where they should be, which is really purposeful vehicles for driving um, joint business plans, mutually um, beneficial objectives between trading partners. So, OK, why has this maybe not been thought of or worked before? Yeah. Um, well, this is... It's, it's, it's probably not fair to say it hasn't worked before, but I think the onus um, on making it work very well um, now is, is definitely upon us. Um, and the reason is that customers have um, high expectations um, and the competitive landscape is, is um, increasingly, increasingly tough. Um, and, and really, um, one way to tackle that competitive landscape and give the great customer service that um, that is needed is to, is to, is to focus. And manufacturers um, need to be able to focus on bringing great products to market, make designing and making great products. Um, and distributors need to focus on, on their great customer service, on their local networks, their local expertise, their subject matter expertise. So putting both together so that they're working in concert um, can give a, 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 um, what the customer wants, which is great product and great service. So Andy, without that high quality collaboration, how are relationships between trading partners impacted? Well, perhaps first we, sh we, we should think about the human, human factor. Um, so with sort of opaque B2B arrangements, um, then mistrust and suspicion cre creeps in. Um, and that mistrust and suspicion can really detract from a, 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 um, a focus on, on, on the goals of the business collaboration. The second is operational efficiency. Um, so you know, time can time can be burned trying to sort mm -hmm. out um, how deals reconcile mm -hmm. um, and we, what money is due. Um, and the third is what we might call internal friction. So um, you know, within individual companies, um, maybe finance teams and commercial teams might feel that they've got sort of conflicting duties. Um, the commercial team is looking to get that competitive edge um, and the finance team is looking to um, ensure robust, correctly stated financial statements. Um, and, 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 and the two can sort of feel at, at, at loggerheads. Um, so, you know, really great quality deal management is needed um, to allow both parties to be able to do their, their job well without interfering um, with each other. So how is performance improved for both parties with collaboration? Sure. Um, so first of all, operational efficiency is going to go up um, and mistrust and suspicion is going to go, go down. Um, 
the the focus on achieving the the um, business goals is 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 improved, um, and the risk of of um, discrepancy and financial compliance um, is 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 reduced. And finally, of course, there is the team the team factor again, team satisfaction, team motivation, team retention is increased. And software solutions that drive business to business collaboration exist, don't they? They do, and, and maybe it's, it, it, it's worth saying at this point that um, a combination of the power of software and the power of people with a real commitment to make it work is what can make all of, all of the difference. But yep, there absolutely are SaaS um, software products on the market, such as our DealTrack product. Um, and, and DealTrack is, 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 of course, a tool that allows companies to manage their B2B arrangements in a joined up fashion with their trading partners. Um, where you know, we can benefit from things such as a shared um, definition of deals, a transparent um, basis for, for the transactions that are being used to calculate deal earnings. Um, and there are many other things that really just take the friction out of um, running these B2B deals. Okay, so Andy, what would you conclude as the three key benefits of collaboration? Well, the first really is, is um, is allowing a real focus on um, mutually beneficial joint business plans without the distractions and noise. The second is maybe operational efficiency. Um, so um, operating these deals around structured information, high quality information, robust processes um, can lead to, you know, of course, the better cash flow, reduced disputes and errors, improve financial compliance. And the third is really that the um, potentially the manufacturer and the distributor value is, is, is reinforced through, um, through the best of, best of both parties coming together to give great product, great customer service to customers. Okay, so to conclude, your two tips, I guess, or strategies for driving growth and profitability is A, kind of taking control of those deals, the way they're managed and importantly calculated, because as, as we discussed, you can manage your deals in a certain way, but actually maybe potentially there's errors in calculation and that's where some uh, misrebate could be hiding. Um, so there's that and we introduced the idea of a rebate management system as a calculation tool to help with that uh, and what we mean by it and, and, and what it does. Uh, and second then strategy for driving growth and profitability we said was collaborating with your trading partners. So we discussed why that maybe hasn't worked before uh, and how relationships are impacted uh, and the benefits of doing so uh, and software solutions that can help with that. So thank you Andy for answering those. So whilst we've been talking, we've had some questions coming in. Um, let me just see from our Q&A what we've had. So the first question we have here is we're interested, but how do we get our suppliers or customers to collaborate with us as not many think about collaborative growth initially? Okay, yeah. Well, maybe communication's key. Um, your trading partners um, need to hear about your vision um, and strategy for this and the benefits to, to all that could, could be um, obtained. You know, and it's true that um, one can't do collaboration alone, um, but, you know, one can certainly take the lead. Um, companies have a community of customers, um, companies have a community of suppliers. Um, and having a clear strategy for um, the deals within those trading um, relationships um, can have a really I I big impact, um, and particularly if that strategy is communicated very clearly to, to those trading partners. So really a formal program um, of adoption onto onto a game plan that is centered around world-class deals management um, can, can, can really get um, trading partners on board. Okay, so the second question, we're happy we calculate our rebate deals pretty well. So is there actually any benefit in still having a rebate management system as part of a strategy? I think I can take this. So uh, the short answer is yes, um, there, is, there is still benefits to to still having a rebate management system. So for example, if we're talking about uh, our rebate management system deal track, uh, we have other features such as an approval workflow. So looking at having a deal signed off within an organization and, and potentially then sending that on to a supplier or a customer. Uh, we notice that that's a lot of back and forth emails uh, within businesses right now. And so within deal track, it's automatic 
automatically, once it's been approved, goes to the next person and so on. So it's all in one system. So there's features such as that. There's also things we have like the watch list app, looking at opportunities for uh, potentially where a customer could spend more or where you could spend more with your suppliers and gain more rebate. So there's features like that and then also uh, a cash module looking at potentially a creditor's report or a debtor's report uh, of how much rebate you're due. So yeah, there's there's a lot more features than uh, just just kind of it being a calculation tool. Um, and if you are interested in learning about that really and, and how we could help more, please get in touch for a demo. I think that would be the best way to, to answer that, to, to see it in person for yourself. Sure. So we're running out of time, but we've got time for one more question. Uh, we have different deal mechanisms that are complex. Therefore, we deal with them separately offline. Can a rebate management system handle this? So a again, yes, uh, a rebate management system can. For example, again, DealTrack, we have uh, various deal mechanisms we work with from uh, different clients in the building materials industry. So if we haven't seen it before, we're happy to add to that. Um, again, I'd probably say get in touch on that and we can discuss that further then, um, again, in a demo. But thank you, everyone, for your questions. Thank you, Andy, for your time. Thank you, Laura. Um, and if you do have any further questions, drop us a message or any afterthoughts. And those of you ha that have asked questions that we haven't been able to get to you today, um, don't worry, we'll be in touch with those um, and hopefully answer those as best as we can for you. Uh, so thank you, Andy, for your time today. And thank you, everyone, for watching. We hope you found it really insightful. Um, and keep a lookout for our next webinar. If you follow us on our social media channels, so we've got LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, you can keep up to date with us, hopefully like our stuff uh, and view our next webinar. So hopefully see you guys then. Take care. Bye.